looked up through events, your satisfaction, our priority, this is a disclaimer. The views and opinions expressed on this show by the host do not necessarily state or reflect those of the channel. Furthermore, the views and the opinions of the guests do not reflect those of the host and the channel. Thank you, Sia Bonga. Welcome to the Mfumfimfu show. I'm uh, I have an exclusive for you. An exclusive. Uh, the name is Mono. Yeah. Because of the dreadlock. Yeah, Mono means one. Mono means one. Um, one in a million. But now you don't even have one kavuzi. You don't even have one, <laughs> one dreadlock. <laughs> even even hair, you, you know, I'm too you're old. losing your hair now. I'm too old to grow hair. <laughs> I'm turning 54 this year. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Welcome to the Phone Fever Show. It's a special edition brought to you by Dab3 Events. Uh, we do sound engineering. We do a uh, PA system for hire, for conferences, for parties, and we do PA system and also lighting. We we'll do road shows and we do uh, all sorts you of. We do party. everything. Yes, we do everything concerning sound. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and also brought to you by Ogushet Designs. Those are the are the guys who do our who do our graphics. You're definitely going to see the poster, and I hope you're going to like it. And uh, brought to you also by Peer Event Solutions, who provided us with furniture uh, and the nice designs that we have, and also ORG Media Services. We we'll do visual arts production. Uh, we we'll do photography. Uh, those are the those are the guys who who provide Enkunjeni exclusive. And I go by the name of Sipo Mesenyati. And right now, I feel honored. I feel special to have the legend alive, the man himself, Clive Mono Mukundu. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much, uh, and I'm very happy to be here. Mm -hmm. And what brings you to Bulawayo? Uh, there's a conference tomorrow, starting tomorrow. It's a three-day conference, uh -huh. and uh, we are talking about uh, formalizing the music industry. Okay. It's, uh, it was organized by the National Arts Council with uh, UNESCO. Okay. Yeah. So right now, most of the musicians that we have, my vendor, that are informal by my streets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are some who are formal, uh -huh. but um, a good number of them are not formalized. So we are trying to find a way of uh, formalizing the industry. So when you're saying they are informal musicians, what are you really saying? Because it's just, um, for me now, if, if I'm looking at musicians, everyone is just a musician. Yeah, uh, being a musician doesn't need to be formalized or officialized. If you're a musician, th th that's okay. Mm -hmm. But what we're talking about, uh, you need to be part of the economy, like paying your taxes and uh, okay. getting organized and uh, making sure that you are running it as a proper industry instead oh. of just jamming on the street corner. Okay. So that's what we're trying to to, 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 to organize. Yes. I, 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 according to my knowledge, in some other countries, the music, play, the, the music setter plays an important role in terms of the economy of governments. And then the situation here, Dumdara, I recall Yeah, the situation is not as uh, like the other countries you mentioned. Because right now, uh, two weeks ago, I was in Jamaica mm -hmm. for, for one week. Did you bring any special product from Jamaica? I brought some W E E. I know I didn't bring anything. Along those lines, <laughs> I just came with some knowledge. It was a, uh -huh. it was a massive conference with people like Shaggy, Biniman, Sean Paul, Mtabaruka, and everybody. So the point that I was trying to get it is. Uh, Music in Jamaica is one of the biggest um, contributors to... The GDP. Yeah, yeah. And even to, to their tourism. Because uh -huh. I was at the Bob Marley Museum. It's one of their biggest tourist attractions okay. in Jamaica. And as soon as you enter the airport, there's a huge Bob Marley poster. And there's uh, Bob Marley music playing all around. Uh -huh. So it's their acknowledgement of how the music industry is bringing in a lot of... Um, uh, tourist attractions, a lot of uh, GDP in the country. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly what we are trying to get to. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, th that's that's a huge step. Yeah. I hope, you, I hope all, all all goes well. Oh, isn't it? What 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 triggered this? I heard you 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 are coming from the capital, mm -hmm. and there is a lot of copyright copywriting happening there. What's what's the <laughs> issue? What's Rupa say? Yeah, the problem is uh, with copyright issues. There is a lot of ignorance. And the biggest problem is... Uh, is that part of the triggers of trying to 
formalize the music industry? It's one of them, but it was not triggered by the copyright issues, okay. uh, the, the, the recent copyright issues. Uh. But um, copyright is part and parcel of the music industry. It's part and parcel of the formalization of the music industry. Because what we discovered is that um, a lot of musicians are very much unaware of uh, things like copyright, like um, all the other stuff that is to do with um, formalization. But the problem is the people who know nothing are the loudest every time. The loudest is the weakest. Yeah, you see. So... There are some people who we used to respect them before they started speaking. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as they opened their mouth, they were shocked. Oh, hey, that's their level of knowledge. So, I usually get that with my girls. Huh? I usually get that with the girls that crush on me. <laughs> <laughs> they always tell me what I see for the open. The moment you open your mouth, ah, you don't seem like the gentleman that Aish, I thought you are. Aish, Aish. <laughs> yeah, that's a story for another day. Let's keep it for another day. <laughs> Yeah, so um, uh, I think there's a lot of ignorance when it comes to um, copyright law. Uh -huh. the, there are some people who are even, who are even insulting Baba Charamba. Okay, for that issue. Yeah, instead of sympathizing with him, they were insulting him. Uh -huh. And uh, some of them were prominent people with big names. Uh -huh. So we're shocked. So we have such big names who know nothing about such important the, issues of uh, the music industry. Yes. Like copyright. Uh -huh. So right now, a lot of institutions are busy trying to organize workshops so that artists can come. But the biggest problem is most Zimbabwean artists will never come to, to a workshop unless they are promised beer and food. Is that the situation that you have that side? Yeah. I don't know about Bulawaya, but in Harare, if you don't promise beer and food, they don't come for... Ah, this side they come because they love music. Ah. Isn't it with the creative hub? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, Bulawaya, you know, she and the... Seat of Queens and yes, Kings. Yes, and, yeah, and so Kings. Yes. Can, can, you, in, can you say Bulawayo without saying blue? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get you Bula, to be one of to be one of us. Bulawayo. I'm one of you. Yes, Bulawayo. Say, Bulawayo. Bulawayo. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Bulawayo. And uh, you, as a guitarist, mm -hmm. how does the copyright issues get to affect you? Um, it affects me as a composer because I'm also a composer. Okay. But as a guitarist, you know how it is with the, with music. Usually, what's considered most is the the lyrical content mm -hmm. and the melody content, especially with regards to the lyrical content, the melodies that are included in the lyrics. So with guitars, but there's nothing we can do. But the lyrical content is the one which is um, taken care of a lot with copyright. So as a composer, it's a serious concern as well. Mm -hmm. So have you taken any initiative in terms of your own personal works to say, okay, I want to copyright this or something like that? Um, usually, the, the, the <laughs> Pantagaranya is when something is stolen. Before oh. that, Pananya. Uh, so, so you're waiting for Mbava? Huh? <laughs> you're waiting for someone to steal <laughs> some <laughs> works. <laughs> yeah, that's always the case around the world. I'm, I'm sure you followed the... The Marvin Gaye issue. It was Marvin Gaye that guy in front of the Orange. What's his name? Who? Ed Sheeran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, it was after the Marvin Gaye estate complained that Ed Sheeran uh, plagiarized the Marvin Gaye song. That's when it came to light. But um, before the judgment was passed, I did my own video essay and I said that Ed Sheeran is going to win and he won the case. Wow. Because I analyzed it. The, the, the case and so that uh, Ed Sheeran could get away with it easily. So what, what made him get away with that? Yeah, when According it comes to, to copyright, analysis. when it comes to copyright, uh, when it comes to a song, there's a chord progression mm -hmm. and then there's uh, the melodies used on the lyrics or on the vocal part. Mm -hmm. and then there's the lyrics. When it comes to the chord progression, it cannot be copyrighted. No one owns a chord progression. Okay. Yeah, both the code progression. Code progression. Code progression. Yeah, code progression is sort of like the template where the songs is where where, the, where songs are written. So if you look around the world, if you take one song and look at the code progression, you find that there are more than 50,000, 20,000, millions of songs on the same code progression. For example, in Sungura, they mainly use the code progression known as one four one five in technical terms. If you take all Sungura songs, I can bet you 99.9% .9 of all Sungura songs, they use the same chord progression, which is 1415. So no one owns a chord progression. 
Then when it comes to melodies, uh, like the melodies that are used on the lead vocals, mm-hmm. that's where you get a problem now. Mm-hmm. So if we look at uh, the Ed Sheeran case, use the same chord progression which was used by Marvin Gaye, mm-hmm. but uh, that pro- chord progression was used before Marvin Gaye even before Marvin Gaye was even born. Mm-hmm. So it was not Marvin Gaye's chord progression. Mm-hmm. It was used before he was born. So. It was made popular by Marvin Gaye, but he did not own it. Oh. So Ed Sheeran used the same code progression, and uh, the Marvin Gaye estate was suing him for using that code progression, and okay. obviously they were not going to win. Uh-huh. So I predicted that uh, Ed Sheeran going is going to win, to win, and he won the case. Wow. Mm. And uh, you've been constantly coming to Bulawayo? Yeah. Yes. What, what, is, what is the one thing that you come to, to this place and you're like, wow, this is unique about Bulawayo, and I enjoy this about Bulawayo? Female... Performers, Fem- they like are the you. best. Bulawayo <laughs> ladies are the best when it comes to stage performance. They are the best. Like every Bulawayo lady is a performer. Still even, can I, even if they are walking <laughs> on the streets, they, they are performing. No, I didn't just, know about Just that. look at Bulawayo ladies. They are just pure art. <laughs> Bulawayo ladies are just pure art, Bob. I'm not trying to be a pivot, but... Um... <laughs> <laughs> yes, we understand. I'm not trying to be a pivot. <laughs> you know, I'm not one, but um, when it comes to performance, yeah. the lower ladies are the best. But to us... Uh, have you ever looked at uh, Iyasa, Songs of Lozy K, uh, Sandra Ndebele? Mm-hmm. You, you know, when they dance, uh, uh, they'll be smiling and dancing, and uh, uh, it's just out of this world. But to us, the, one, the guys, the, the ladies that you see on stage, they are the worst performers. Uh, uh, uh. The ones that you see on the streets when you're walking around. This is blasphemy. No, it's not. You, this it's guy not, needs to repent. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> this is blasphemy. I, I think I should take you to the locations. Let's go to Just, my, just watch the ladies walk, Baba. I'll cancel my... my, 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 my you my cancel the way, Even go workshop if you go there and look at the, uh, the, the ladies. <laughs> Yeah, I hope there will so, be many blowing. The ones that you see walking on the streets, just pure art, they're performing the way... They, even when I came to Arara, I got disappointed. Ah, I just concentrated on my phone. Uh, <laughs> and concentrated on what I had come for. But in terms of the ladies, ah, mm. the best export that you have right now, Mingas. Hey. <laughs> Were you giving a car? Seriously. Were you giving a car? Um, or yeah. you are not yet there? Uh, yeah, the car Even issue. If you're a legend. The problem with the car issue is that um, <laughs> no matter which side you comment, yeah, you'll be on the wrong side. Seriously. So I would never comment I anything about that issue. Because if you on the right side, if you're on the left side, whatever you say, you'll be misquoted. So silence can never be misquoted. So I will use silence on that one. But silence. And I will drink my blood of Jesus. <laughs> We t- tell the Mbingas we are here, we are watching over this side, the greener pastures, that side. Yeah, I'll tell them, because uh, I think um, Rare has got the biggest number of Mbingas, but my, my biggest problem with the Mbingas is that, um, um, yeah, but anyway, I'll be misquoted, let me... Again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because my biggest problem with them is um, they concentrate on... They, they make you feel like for you to be happy, you need to have money. And my point is, uh, no one has got a monopoly on happiness. Because right now... Tell us about monopoly, mono. Yeah, I'm <laughs> mono, so I know a lot about monopoly. Because no one owns happiness. Even if you have a price, you can ten dollars. You can have a lot of money, you can have a lot of happy. You can fly to Dubai, you are happy. One. At every level, we've got people who are happy. No one owns happiness. There's a famous saying by Bob Marley. I saw it when I went to Jamaica. He said, some people are very poor. All they have is money. I bet he said that when he was high, bro. That's very <laughs> deep. Uh-huh. Yeah, all they have is money, so they are very poor. So I'm not saying there's anything wrong with having money, but... Um, don't think if you have money, you've got a monopoly on happiness. Okay. Yeah, anybody can be happy without money. Of course, we need money. I know that um, some people say you cannot buy happiness. Money cannot buy happiness. Hey, blah, blah, blah. But I think if you know where to buy, you can buy happiness. But whether you have money or not, you don't have a mo- No one has a monopoly 
for happiness. Anybody can be happy. Yes. I'm not rich, but I'm happy. Yes. Yeah. Talking talking about happiness, in the beginning of your career, you were, you, 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 your journey was filled with a lot of failure. How was that experience? We failed at, until we had no more failures to <laughs> fail. <laughs> more than 10 times. Yeah, we went for auditions and we would, we would go on foot from Kwazana to Southerton. Because our parents didn't want us to get into, into the music industry, so they did not want to spend any money on us. Sold foot all the way from Kwazana to Southerton. It's a long distance. And we'll go there and fail. We failed more than 10 times until everybody in the band was discouraged. And, um, but uh, with me, I had made a research before I came into the music industry. And according to my research, I knew that um, getting into the music industry was tough. Whether in Zimbabwe, whether in America, Jamaica, or anywhere in the world, it was tough. The ground is not level. So because I had made my research, I knew that, number one, it's tough to get into the music industry. Number two, it doesn't pay very well. So I knew what I was getting myself into. So that's why I never gave up. So you, you're talking about challenges uh, from your family. Mm. Personally yourself, you had challenges with your family in terms of playing the guitar and everything? Yeah, 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 yeah. I had challenges. And I remember my first girlfriend, uh, she damned me because of that. How's she? Uh, her friends were laughing at her. Ah, you are going to get AIDS. You are dating a musician. Musicians always die of AIDS. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And they had a heartbreak for one year. <laughs> and Andra Manozati, she had moved to Mutare, I moved to Mutare, and they got to a band in your like, hand. Like Blau, we'll move from Arari to Blau, and look for another band to play with in Blau. Okay. Then the following day, I went to see her, and she damned me, just because I'm a musician. So oh. the challenges were everywhere, on the romantic side, on the family side, on the financial side, everywhere, challenges all around and me. And what kept you going? That research. Was but deceived. research and experience is too, like... Yeah, what happens in life is um, if you follow your dream and you live according to your calling, you start living. Because there's a difference between living and existing. Existing, you're just taking up space. But when you are living, you'll be living according to your calling. If you are living to, according to your calling, you are living. That's why you see people who retire, they get old very fast and die very fast. But if you are still living according to your calling, which phone runs, you are living. Mm -hmm. So because of that, I knew that uh, what I was getting myself into, I knew that there was no money there, mm -hmm. but I knew that it was my calling. So I said, you know what? My father wants me to be a teacher. So I said, you know what? My father wants me to be a teacher. I said, you know what? But this is my calling, so I'm going to follow my calling. That's why, even after traveling more than 30 countries around the world, I never slept away in the country of America. I still came back. I never overstayed in any country, even for one day. Mm. I've traveled over 30 countries around the world, but I still came back to Zimbabwe. But this is something that, you, because this mm. is something that you value. Yeah, because the only place I can fulfill my calling is here in Zimbabwe. That's why I was calling back. I always came back. Because to me, my calling is more valuable than driving a Mercedes-Benz. Right now, I drive an ex job and I'm happy. Mono, it's going to be a long time since you get that code. Would we have <laughs> yes. And the way you learned the guitar, mm. do you feel it was just natural or there was some spiritual intervention into it? Yeah, when it comes to music, there's an element of um, the natural and then there's an element of the physical where you put your own effort. But in your case... Yeah, in my case, um, naturally, I'm a musician by nature. Because I remember, even when I was five years old, every time I saw somebody holding a guitar, my heart would beat very fast. And I wanted to touch the guitar. I was... Uh, so just by looking at the guitar. So by age nine, I made myself a one tin guitar. No one taught me how to tune it, but I was able to tune it. And uh, able to play some songs on it. And you could hear, could you, this this is not okay. This is yeah, yeah, I could hear it with my ears. Even no, no one had taught me anything. Uh, it was only at age 17 that I met somebody who taught me how to play an actual guitar. That's why I learned to play the, I mean, Panakas just got to play the actual guitar. But my point is, there is this natural side, like I mentioned when I was young, I learned how to tune it by ear. 
That's the natural side. And then Panaka so this is my notes. This is G, this is F, this is F sharp. That was the physical side. But the spiritual side comes to the natural side as well. Because nature and Amari is the same thing. Yeah. So then, did you, did, at, at that point in time, where, did you feel good, I'm going to be this great and I'm going to be sharing stages in the, all over the world? Um, I don't know about whether I'm great or not, but <laughs> <laughs> what I did is um, I was sure that I was going somewhere with music. Uh-huh. Well, I was very sure. Because by when I was around age 12, I had made up my mind that I'm going to be a full-time musician. Even though I knew that my father was very much against it, uh-huh. but I had made up my mind that I'm going to be a full-time musician. And um, I'm happy with it. Up to today, I'm living my dream. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm not rich, but I'm very happy. Yes. Because I'm living my dream. Uh-huh. And working, I know you've been asked this question a lot, mm. but I get the pleasure today to be the one who asked it. Mm. Working with Olive Mtukudzi, the late Olive Mtukudzi, how was the experience? Um, it was like playing for the national team. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because Olive Mtukudzi was the biggest artist that time. He's still the biggest, even in his grave, he's still the biggest. So we were traveling around the world representing Zimbabwe. And Olive Mtukudzi was treated like a head of state all around Africa. And um, sometimes we'll be in motorcades. I remember we arrived in Zambia and we were taken to the presidential palace in motorcades. Oh, no. So it was... Um, a proper representation of Zimbabwe was everywhere we went. He, he was, I was surprised that he was bigger outside Zimbabwe than he was in Zimbabwe. Was as far as Uganda, Ethiopia, everywhere they know him. Germany, France, USA, everywhere. He was huge. So I was part of the national team. Mm-hmm. And his worth, his worth ethic? ethic? I was a serious uh, musician, and his business side was very well taken care of. Because he was managed by a lady called uh, Debbie Metcalf. I think she's the best manager ever in Zimbabwe. She's the best artist manager ever in Zimbabwe. She's the one who why took him from... Huh? I'm saying, why is that? Um, she, she, uh, she, she was just good. She was just good. Uh, and then she's the one who took him from nowhere up to... From zero to hero. I give you all that credit. Was uh, she was very good, <laughs> but unfortunately, me and her we were both fired in 2007. Oh, and together with, with five other guys. What What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. Boys, we were just fired. We We heard about it from other people. People started calling us. Ah, oh, guys, I heard you are fired. I, how come you know it and I don't know it? I seen the newspaper. You go and buy the newspaper and you saw, you saw the article. All of them took it, fires the whole band. We're seven of us. We're fired. But the good thing is, I maintained my relationship with all of them too. Until we passed away, we're very good friends. Because I knew that this was just a business decision. It was not personal. And you never, you never go to find out, Goti, why did he fire? No, you, we never go to find out. Because what happened is, um, the new manager who was coming in after debut, he just told us, uh, you know what, Mdara will organize a meeting and we will explain everything. But for now, Mamine is okay. Do I ask on the boss, Basarato Pedas, go ahead, Nizo Mamzi, That was it. Tangosa and Murodi, so Tangosa and Murodi, sell Mam to the other town to do so. Mono, Trippy, I take for a window to Europe at China. At China, why? Because we have, we've been fired. We've been fired. This is sure that those are passport and we're in a visa. So, when I was with the new manager, when I was with the passport, when I was with the new manager, I'm on a visa. You cannot go. I come upon a visa. I was meant to tell you, Basarato Pera. Just like that. Just like that. Murod. But the good thing is, one thing I've always been good at is financial wisdom. I had saved my money. When the, I remember I told you that I did the research before I got into the music industry. Yes. So I knew that this industry doesn't pay well and it's a, it's a, it's a gamble. And a clever gambler knows how to save for a bad day. Because in the music industry, there are so many very high highs and very low lows. So I knew 
anything can happen in the music industry. So I saved my money. I was saving my money. So when I was fired, I was okay. The only difference is that I was not getting into airplanes as I used to. That was the only difference. So when I was fired, a lot of my band, I'm going to phone out him. They would say, what boy? So they were expecting me to say, ah, come down and go ah, They were disappointed because I was not looking for any job. I was okay. You, you had your own vision. Yeah, that that you had. Boy, I bought my studio. And you were solid on it. I bought a house in one year. Mm. Yeah, when I joined the Olive and Boots, I bought a house in one Because the money was good. It was coming in fast. My goal is 30 minutes. I hope you watch dinner so in my US. In 30 minutes, I'm out in a five star hotel. And so, the first time we were getting this ah, we didn't even know how to what to do with the money. Eh. And let me tell you something. The first pay what happened is the We want you to come and see how we perform. You are not performing with us tonight. You just have to come and see how we perform so that when you join us on stage, you know what to do. So the first show I was just there watching, and I didn't even know that I was going to be paid for this. So I was just watching and enjoying myself. Oh, Being paid nice. for watching. Yeah. And then on Monday, I get a call, come and get your pay. My pay for what? <laughs> ah. said, you came, you stopped everything and you came to watch the show. So you were working. So I went to get my pay and the younger person went to Dandy, so she break so. Ah, what, I, what do I do with this? What's Mandandi in English? Uh, what? what do you call it? We <laughs> again. Okay. They call it what? Uh, Dandy watching and dand. In English, what do they call it? <laughs> rubber bands. It was yes, tied with the rubber bands. And I, and I didn't even know what to do with it. Uh-huh. All my life, I'd never, I'd never been paid such a huge amount of money. Okay. So I took it to my wife and she said, what do we do with this money? <laughs> That's how good he was when it comes to... Because Oliver Ntukuz was very good at treating his musicians. Uh-huh. I can safely say Oliver Mtukuzwa is my best boss ever. And the number two is Chioni Somaraire. Okay. Yeah, boss, I also worked with her after I got fired from Oliver Mtukuz. Uh-huh. She, she's my second Proudly boss. Fired. Yeah, yeah. She, because I'd worked for different people before. I'd worked for churches and uh, they will tell you your pay is coming from God. But their pay, <laughs> but their pay was coming from the offering basket, but mine was supposed to come from God. And uh, I was told to pray when I was having problems. So and, then you were like, ah, is that the reason why you're no longer a Christian now? No, it contributed. In You know, I'm, I'm, I've always been somebody who loves research. So the reason why I did convert it is nothing to do with the frustrations at church. But the frustrations at church contributed to me researching. Was um, When Christians frustrated me, I started questioning. I did not question God. Yes. I started questioning the religion. Because I have no problems with God. Uh-huh. Because I believe God is there. I, I think Whether we, you believe it or not. Yeah, you, I think it, you will <gasps> never find an African who is an atheist who doesn't believe in God. All Africans believe in God. But the issue comes when we say Jesus, Mohammed, Buddha... Or Jesus. it a problem. But when it comes to God. <laughs> so what did Christians do to you? Yeah, the problem the one started, significant incident that you remember, like ah. When I became a Christian, I converted on Tuesday, the 20th of June, 1994, around 10 o'clock in the morning. Mm. That's when I became a Christian. Yeah. Who had preached to you? Remember the person who preached to you? Yeah, he was called Evangelist Kasinga Kori from Zayoji. Mm. He's a great preacher, one of the best preachers in Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm. But when I became a Christian, I started noticing, because they were saying that when you become a Christian, when you receive Jesus in your heart, he comes into your heart, and then everything changes. Things that you didn't, you used to like before that were sinful, you start um, turning your back, blah, 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 blah. And then I noticed some of the people who were influential in my conversion. Some of them were cheat, not make sure. cheating on their wives. They were beating their wives. And I was not beating my wife. My only problem was... You wanted to drinking. beat your wife? <laughs> no. I was not beating up my wife. So I was wondering, so how come I'm considered a sinner? I don't beat up my wife. I don't cheat on my wife. But these guys are busy cheating on their wives. So, and there were some who were still in church money. Yeah. And there were big guys in the church with huge posts. 
Why would you have a So I was asking myself, if Jesus is failing to change, change his preachers, where is his power? Because his preachers are not changing. So where is his power? Yo. Yeah, so that was my first question. So every time I ask people, they will say, ah, it's the devil speaking. <laughs> I don't, don't entertain him. So because of that, I was afraid of hellfire, so I would keep quiet. Because they will tell me, you been in hell. Stop asking those questions. <laughs> so I'll keep quiet. And, and the then, final blow. Yeah, and then in 2012, we had a new pastor. And then he started saying that uh, when you are paying your tithes, it has to be more than 10%. <laughs> yeah. So my wife was saying, so when are we going to pay... More than 10%. More than 10%. I said, you know what? This time, <laughs> we now have internet. Was the last time I used to ask questions and people used to ignore me and tell me that I'm, I was going to hell. This time, there's internet. I'm going to research. Uh -huh. So I put Wi-Fi at my, at my house. That was the first time I put Wi-Fi. So I did a three-year research. So my first research was on tides. Yeah. I wanted to know what the Bible says about tides. So you were not comfortable with paying more than 10%? I was not comfortable. Ah! <laughs> What's the church? What, the problem with the church is they, they used to preach tithes like you owed them money. <laughs> they were angry when they were preaching tithes. You know, you're supposed to play your thing and then you, you, you're supposed to play your guitar and the money has to come from God. You see. But you, you are supposed to take out money. Uh, but, but I used to pay my tithes faithfully. Faithfully. So your money was actually coming from God. Um, if you were paying them faithfully and the church was not paying you, so which means you were getting money from God. Yeah, I, with God, I've never had a problem. That's why I call myself ah. God's favorite guitarist. Yes. Oh. Because Marana Gerardini sing it. I've never had a problem with God. Mm -hmm. So I started a research. I did a three-year research. First, first year, it was on tithes. So you yeah, got yeah, yourself yeah. to a diploma. Yeah, on my own. Oh, yes. In Angie, my own living room. Angie, Angie Church diploma. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> so I got into my research... I got into my research. If you look at the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, there's not even a single non-Jew who paid tithes in the Bible. It was all Jews. Number two, Israel was under a theocracy. It was ruled by the church. So tithes was part of their text. Oh. And then number three... Um, this is the same Israel that's bombing Gaza. Pardon? This is the same Israel that's bombing Gaza now. Yeah, yeah, the yes. same Israel. Right now, in, right now they don't the pay tithes. Right now they don't pay tithes. <laughs> and then number three, I discovered that both, actually they used to say, Abraham paid tithes, Abraham paid tithes. But I noticed that Abraham paid tithes once when he gave Melchizedek. He never paid tithes Was it tithes or he gave it to him? And, then they and it was tithes. not money from his own labor. It was loot from war. <laughs> It was loot here. <laughs> so, and then the last thing, I noticed that they were correct in saying that tithe was, was more than 10%. They were correct. Because it was indeed more than 10%. But there's not even a single non-Jew who paid tithe in the Bible. So I said to myself, where do I fit? I'm not a Jew, so why should I pay tithe? So I told my wife, I'm not going to pay tithes anymore. And she reported it to church. <laughs> and the church elder said, ah, why not pay tithes? Yeah. And I said, come to my place and let's discuss, let's open the Bible. And no one came. Didn't they give you the nickname Judas Christ? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They, I think they did. And then after that, I started asking myself, if they were lying did they to, come to us, you, Did they come to your house? No one came. Because I said, Come. Was it, uh, with me, I don't... One thing, one thing about me is I don't fear anybody. I respect everybody, but I never fear anybody. That's one thing about me. So I said, whoever has got some concerns about me not paying tithes, come to my place. Let's discuss, let's open the Bible and uh, prove who is wrong. But be careful. Yeah. So maybe they were afraid, they were afraid of deconverting, so they did not come. <laughs> so after that, so other Christian, other gospel musicians mm. that you worked with, one Ivy Combo, it was Ivy Combo in who? Ah, a lot, a lot. I've, I've played. I'm featured on more than a thousand albums in Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. and the majority is gospel music. Because oh. when I repented in 1994, there were no lead guitarists in church. 
Wengu ni zama kusi wanyungu ni bingu 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 bingu. Yeah, that's how they used to play. They didn't know how to play lead guitar. I was the only lead guitarist. So other gospel musicians, when they heard with the this this man is no longer wanting, when they heard that you are unchristianing yourself or dechristianing. Some of them started saying I was a satanist. You see, and some were even telling their their congregants, never record with mono, never I am mono. <laughs> Was is now a certain And by then do you still have your your No, I my, my, my look I had cut it in 1994. What triggered you to cut your I joined the police band. Iconic. I had passed an interview with the police band. Oh. Yeah, I had gone for an interview. Was, what happened is I had got my girlfriend pregnant. <laughs> so I needed the money. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And my guitar anga So I had with the police band what are my musicians. So I went with my dreadlocks. That time anga wanda manje wangwa umsoro wese. Bozo wanda ranga re kuchikoro chete. But after school I had a full head of dreadlocks. So I went for an interview and they said okay you passed but you can't join the police band with the dreadlocks. You need to cut your dreadlocks. But since my you ufuni mali you just said to Yeah I to cut the dreadlocks because my girlfriend was pregnant. Bozo pro my girlfriend did baba wake wanga singa ndidi baba wangwa wanga singa mudi. Yo Yeah, so there just, was a serious war. The two of you guys. Because I'm the wrong tatani, it's an eight face. I sit hands in. Do not say my guitar van darum, but you still remember my story. Yes, yes. Then Vati, if anything happens, don't look for me. And I said, I will never look for you. But I looked for him so when you, my you, girl you, got you, pregnant. You, <laughs> you had that quarrel with him. It went to that. I it went to that level. He said, never look for me. And I said, I will never look for you. And then my girlfriend was pregnant. I had to look for him. <laughs> and then when you look for him he said what he said no I have I nothing you. to do with this was I told you to leave music and he refused so I had to take care of myself and then that's when I heard that the policeman is looking for lead guitarist uh-huh. so I went with a, with another guy who became a friend of mine so he was also with, with dreadlocks he's called Spencer and both of us passed but we were both told to cut our hair Spencer didn't cut his hair, but I cut mine because I was desperate for the money. But I never got employed. I don't know why. Why? I don't even know, up to now. But Spencer got a job. Every time I do not zingo, I do pure my reasons. <laughs> <laughs> the same, same thing happened with all of them to this band. I was never given a reason. So it's my bad luck, I think. So this interview might end without you being given a reason. <laughs> you, you might cut off your mics any minute from now. <laughs> And they won't be surprised. Yes. So now the other musicians are they are saying with you, um, Tara said he's satanist. Then how do you check that? I don't believe in the Bible. So I don't believe about Satan anymore. So, <laughs> so you, you need to be a Bible believer to believe there's a satanist because you need to believe there's Satan. Yeah, so I'm not a Christian. So it's a black and white situation. If there's black, there has to be white. Yeah, because Christianity... It's just a European version of Judaism, but it's a necessary lie. <laughs> yeah. It's a necessary lie, because <laughs> if you listen to what psychologists say, they say that um, religious people, they even live longer. They don't take beer, it's healthy. They don't fight, one. it's safe. And... Um, Hansi, if, <laughs> I think this one, what you're, what you're bringing up, you know, you know the monoism. It's mo- it's it's, yeah, it's cool. monosophy. Yeah, it's monosophy. <laughs> it's called monosophy. So religion is a is a necessary lie. It's a good lie. Was um, even slaves in America they became better slaves after they received Jesus. But they, they did not notice that uh, when they were praying to Jesus to free them from slavery, their white masters were praying to the same Jesus, and Jesus answered their white masters and ignored them. And they never took notice. That right now, people don't. I mean, people will cry. They will shed tears looking at Jesus on the cross, but they will never shed tears about uh, the death of Joshua Nkomo or the death of Mbiyane. And uh, they feel Jesus Christ died for them. They don't think Joshua Nkomo died for them. They don't think Mbiyane and died for them. Mm-hmm. But anyway, that's a story for another day. To viewers, please, I'm not a satanist. <laughs> I'm not trying to deconvert you. Mm-hmm. Carry on with your churches, but with me, uh, well, you don't want to. You don't want have anything nothing to do, to do with Jesus. Yes. So mm-hmm. now that you're talking about Africa and uh, looking at our current position in Zimbabwe, and to bring it to something that you might, but definitely every Zimbabwean knows about Highlanders and Dynamos. 
Mm. So what do you think about the tribal feud that's in between the two that has happened for quite a long time? Yeah, what happens is if you don't travel, there are certain problems that you think are very huge when they are very small. Those two things that really open up your mind is traveling, traveling. and reading. I've traveled a lot. And I've you're... read a lot. Uh -huh. I'm not one, though, one of those dumb musicians who don't read. I read. You read a lot. I read a lot. Do you have yeah. anyone, one, one particular musician that you have got? Ah, this one, Agabali, he doesn't read any book. <laughs> I've got a long list. <laughs> but I won't mention names. So the point I'm trying to hey, get wait, to... Hey, wait, 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 wait. Even <laughs> some of the people that we respect a lot. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a lot of... Dandites. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't use that word, but we've got a lot of people who don't read. <laughs> they yeah. just don't want the black and white. So the point I was trying to get it is, um, if you don't travel, there are certain problems that you think are very huge in your country. When they're just tiny, tiny little fringe problems. Like in Zimbabwe, we, we have no tribalism in Zimbabwe. We love each other. We really love each other. My... My best friends, and Derek Mpof, and and when he walks in Harare, don't never walk with Abed in Harare if you don't want to be a camera person. Mm. Was it, as soon as you walk with Abed in Harare, everybody wants a picture with Abed Nyati. They don't care who you are. They'll tell you, hold the camera. Please take me a picture with Abed Nyati. So you're no you tell them, no, I'm, you're no longer at home. My name is Bono. Hey, chi, chi, chi. They, they don't care. They want a picture without Benyati. So in Zimbabwe... That's, that's overseas in Harare now. Yeah. That's, that's what he experienced. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So in Zimbabwe, what yeah. we call tribalism is just... A, of course, you there's, there are no statistics without um, some, 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 some exceptions. Uh -huh. Of course, you find one Debele guy who hates Shona. Of course, of course, you find one Shona who hates Debele. But those are tiny fringe. Um, th those are exceptions. So, what will be what will be your advice to perpetrators of that kind of tribalism? I will just say, guys, uh, certain things just leave them to politicians. We are okay. We are meeting each other. We've got um, a lot of um, Debele wives in Harare. Ah! And, <laughs> And they are beautiful. You and queens. They are beautiful. Uh -huh. They are very beautiful. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, so now that you mentioned, you mentioned something which I find very important. I know it's very healthy that we, we leave tribalism maybe to politicians or whosoever the perpetrators are, mm. us as the average people. We cool about that. But there's, some, there's something that you mentioned with the Albert Nyat. He can't walk the streets of Harare. Everyone wants a picture with him. But mm. this side is a different case. Serious? Ah, you can walk home, Dada. You can walk around. Ever. No one's saying anything. Why is it like that? Ah, it's the Veles, brah. Why is it like He's this? just Albert Nyat to us. Is it because he's a prophet who is... Um, what is this? Yes, we cool. We celebrate him. That's how we are as Ndebele people. Oh, I was with Clive Monom Kundu. That's just it. So do you mean you don't have a celebrity culture? Or... We do have a celebrity culture, minimum level, and you have to hit, I don't know, you have to hit South African vibes. That's just us. This do, you, do you support your own artist? Is Blawayo? That's the, we rarely support. I'm bringing. We, I'm, I'm now. I'm now the one interviewing you. It's okay. It's okay. Let's, is, have, let's have the conversation. The reason why I'm asking you mm. is um, most of your artists we, we, we support them more. Love Mama Jevan was bigger in Harare than here. And maybe you guys didn't. Sandra Debele was bigger in Harare than here. And now that you mentioned Maji, maybe you guys were the ones who didn't pay him a lot, and you made him move that side. No. <laughs> No. The music industry is always... Because this side he knew he wasn't that much celebrated. Mm. So he was complaining that he doesn't get paid much in shows. So if he was having a lot of shows in your side or if he was that side a lot, so you guys didn't pay him. No, we paid him. That's why he moved to Harare. He bought a house. I think he still has a house in Brayside, Harare right now. Oh. I think he still has a house in Harare right okay. now. And we loved him. And uh, the majority of the people in Harare, they didn't even hear a word, but they loved Love Mama Love music. Yeah. Even me, I grew up on Love Mama Javan's music. That's why I can play in the belly guitar like um, anything because of Love Mama Javan. Uh -huh. 
We love Glove Mama Jevan. So maybe we have... And this diff- Afro. Maybe we have different v- definitions of support. Maybe the Matavarian people show... Let me tell support. you something. In Zimbabwe, sometimes we do have problems, but the way we label the problems is, dif- is uh, where the problem is. How so? For example, we've got a problem in music when it comes to money, and um, especially when it comes to money because of the economy, because of different issues. But if you ask a woman, why is it difficult for you? She said, this is because I'm a woman. Um, that's why I'm failing to break through. If you ask a guy from Manika Land, you tell you, it's because I'm from Manika Land. If you ask a guy from Bulawa, you say, it's because I'm from Bulawa. But if you say, list down all your problems, if you ask the woman to list down your problems, the guy from Bulawa, the guy from Manika Land, you notice that the problems are affecting all of us. We are facing problems. So when you... us. Right now in Harare, by March 2023, more than 10 music producers had left Zimbabwe to go for UK because of the way things are right now. Things are very difficult. We never recovered after COVID. But so the point I'm trying to make is we do have problems for sure. But the way we label the problems is the problem. Because <laughs> right now we have what I call Operation Olympics. Mm. Everybody is competing to be the most uh, oppressed. Oh, it's called Operation Olympics. Ah. Yeah, I've never heard of that one. <laughs> yeah, so we need to label our problem. What's the problem is if you give a wrong label to a problem, mm-hmm. you are going to prescribe the wrong med- medicine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you need to give the problem its right uh, label, the right diagnosis, so that you give the yeah, yeah the, the, the right diagnosis so that you give the right prescription to a problem. So right now we are facing problems. Right now our biggest problem is the paymaster. They are paying people $150 per month. Uh-huh. And when I was my paymasters, I was able to get a ticket to bend. That's not about rent. Because my missions, we survive on change. Oh. After I was able fees, rent, food. Then music, the then entertainment yeah. industry. So, we, our biggest problem right now, we are busy pointing at each other, but we are not the problem. We love each other. I love the women. We celebrate each other. I'm looking for a second wife. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have one for me? <laughs> uh, you, have, you have to first show me certain signs that, okay, you have the show. Even shown enough so, since so far, we started So far, you, you're showing me the Shona vibes. Mm. Debele, you have some sort of Ndebeleism inside of you. Nothing will love. <laughs> but I think I've proved myself. Now, your man, my sister, I even have proved myself. You see merit. You see merit. Hey, let's stick to the interview. Oh, okay. yes. So, <laughs> so in your in your in your in your musical career, mm-hmm. the greatest moment that you like, wow, I felt the, at this particular moment, I felt like, okay, I can I can I can die and I will die as a happy man. Which particular moment is that one? First of all. Playing with all of them, because it's just sitting with him, like a garap, and like a garap, and it's a guitar. So, yeah, because I grew up listening to his music. And even my first time meeting some of my favorite musicians, I was part of all of them because it's been. First time I met Love Mama Jevan was 2003 in New York. It was through all of them because the first time I met Joseph Hill, Way Culture, it was through all of them because. In California. Now, Dr. Mira and I, so I didn't even know it's uh, Joseph. Because Jamaicans are very humble. Jamaican reggae musicians, they are very humble. They do take it. It makes you humble. Now. Hmm? Sometimes weed, if you take it, it makes you humble. And did you? Yes, it, it, does two, it does two different things to people. He was wearing some a become very suit. ecstatic, and then some become very. He was wearing a purple suit, and I was wondering to myself, who is this dread man wearing a purple suit? And there was um, a lot of weed uh, being smoked. It was called um, Reg on the River. If you look on YouTube, there's a video where all of them took us played uh, Yemi Lord. And I was on guitar. I had a mustache that time. <laughs> and um, that's the show. Uh-huh. So after we played, Joseph, you went on stage. And I was wondering, ah, it's different. Oh. It's not just in Chuka, Chuka, Chuka Myers. <laughs> If it's being played, never is why even maybe I'm not feeling my no change. Ah, maybe I'm not feeling my no change. So ah, this is different. And I asked, who is this? They said it's Joseph. You and Carl said, ah. So I was standing next to Joseph. You and I never took out my camera. 
the camera that time, Kongsa Dwan myself that time, Kongsa Dwan, but I used to move around with the camera. Yes. And I never took a picture with him. As and evidence. I'm, so my biggest, answering your question, coming yes. back to your question. Uh-huh. I'm very good at coming back to questions. Yes. <laughs> so coming back to your question, my biggest so moment was, was playing with all of them towards. Uh-huh. That was my biggest moment. <laughs> Up to now, so I would assume your worst moments was then when you were when you were in, playing in church. Was was it the one or? <laughs> <laughs> Where did you get this guy? <laughs> uh, this guy, guy, he puts you on the spot. Uh, you know what? I I enjoyed playing in church. Was when I started coming to church, they gave me my suit. <laughs> That was my first time to wear my suit. <laughs> the first one was from Evangelist Cassie. And I used to enjoy him preaching. He's a very good preacher. Yes. I think Muzumabu, no, I've never seen somebody who preaches. Like, I think the one person who comes close is Prophet Magandewa. Uh. Yeah. Uh, boys, I love uh, the way Prophet Magandewa preaches. But Evangelist Cassie, when it comes to preaching, I know when one visitor angles, Jesus wept. I got the canaro so I'm gonna so yes, sure Jesus wept to be sure. He's a massive preacher. I, I I'm not surprised why he likes Makandiwa. Makandiwa mm. is the one who said he's more gifted than God. And you also never controversies are cool. Ah, you make you make good brothers. You make good brothers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Pepe Manua has tower is as well. But anyway, <laughs> since I'm not a Christian, I cannot comment on yeah, yeah man, but yes. <laughs> yes. So I want you to bring me on level ground because we haven't had that kind of a situation this side in, in Matebelen, or maybe we had it, I'm not I'm not familiar with it. Situation here, Winky D. The way is the way is he is being treated as a musician, mm. his relations uh with uh with promoters and the government. How 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 can you interpret that situation since you are in Harare? It's very tricky because I think in any country which you are in, whether in Zimbabwe, America, or anywhere in the world, whether a musician, a journalist, or anything, uh, yeah, you need to treat your politics with care. Because right now, as we speak, Julian Assange is in prison. Okay. But America tells you CNN is free press, BBC is free press, but how come Julian Assange is in prison Mm. and he's not feeling well right now? How come Edward Snowden fled America and went to Russia? How come? Mm. Oh, no. But they tell you BBC the is free press, CNN is free press. Uh, there's no country really straightforward. I'm going to politician as Naropa. That's a lie. America and Doya would have passed up more than any other country in the world. But they portray and They judge other people because they seem differently than them. Oh. Even one day you cringe, I say, one of the pain that put in the day is a perpetrator, but you want to agree me, they were getting 1991. They are not supposed to encroach closer to Russia. And I told you, I read it. Yes, yeah. Yeah. 1991, they made an agreement. I was I was, 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 was also picked Queen and NATO. Uh-huh. Russia was part of the also picked America in NATO. But America, you don't go to the bully, man. So, I'm um, with a musician, whether um, you're a journalist. In fact, you are my leaders. Because you are a musician, you are a leader. Yes. You are a journalist, you are a leader. You are a radio presenter, you are a leader. Whatever you say, you don't have followers, you are a leader. You just need to play your politics correctly. Okay. And it's difficult to fight institutions. I think I've said enough, you Papa. You've, you've said more than enough. Mm. Yes. And then, uh, looking at uh, Bulawayo musicians, are you familiar with any Bulawayo musicians which are the young stalky? Or... I'm a huge fan of Jez Marabin. Oh. We've interacted a lot. Because he comes a lot to Harare. Uh-huh. And Kujata uh, Jata guy. And then we end up kind of strike. I enjoy his music. And Fuyo Brown, I follow a lot. And um, Mrs. K, I follow his music a lot. Mrs. K, I'm cool, huh? Mm. Yeah, I told you I read. I, I'm not dumb. <laughs> I know what's happening. And, give, give, give me one name. And, um, 
this guy who passed away in December, I even did a song with him, with the Prosper Chuma. What's his name? Um, Eli, my Eli. Eh, my Eli. I did oh. a song with Prosper Chuma um, when, when he passed away. Uh-huh. Eh, we did a song with Prosper Chuma and it was played at his memorial service. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I'm aware of everything that's happening around. You, you, you are, you are, you are the embodiment of nationalism. Yeah, I love Zimbabwe. Whether it's Bulawayo or Harare, whether it's Bulawayo women or <laughs> Manika. <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow after the workshop, tomorrow after the workshop, we'll go around. Yeah, I'll be happy. Yes, I want to correct your perception. Go to the ones that perform on stage. Other one, I just want you. We just sit and watch. I'm still, I still doubt you very much. So I have to prove my doubt right now so that you keep your. No, I don't want you to see these around. ones who are up a night shift. I don't want you to see those ones. I want you. Don't you have talented ones, Zipa? But night shift. <laughs> Hi, night, night shift. You is might the... subdue. You don't want to subdue talent. No. My night shift is obvious talent. My queens are. Okay. My night shift. Uh, this is the seat of queens. Come. And kings. Mm. And kings. So in the afternoon, I just want us to go there. Hyper Echo Dini, the places. Makokoba. We just, we just go there. Let's go there. What and about you... today? No, now it's night shift time. I don't want to when you when you're going back to Arada, you're like, ah. You were with Sipo and then he did ABC. I just want us to have a clean slate. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's I think that's fair enough. Yeah, that's Mono, fair. Clive, thank you for being here, man. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you for, 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 for coming and sharing your knowledge. Mm. Uh, I wish... I wish Sharing my monosophy. You need to get that right. <laughs> yes, monosophy. Mm. Yeah. Yes, definitely. And thank you. Thank you for coming here. And uh, blessing. And could be an exclusive... You, you take alcohol. I take the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Even though I don't believe in Jesus. Yes. It's wine, uh-huh. and Jesus used to drink. Oh, what I wanted to ask you: you take, you, do you take weed? No, uh, weed. I just took it as crossfire, but I lose Jamaica, <laughs> and it was serious crossfire. Uh-huh. Because I really felt blessed, uh, felt nice. At that, crossfire point, shit. at that point in time. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Yes. Sorry. Yes, you were you were talking about the significance of this award. Oh yeah. Uh, you got a um, Bulawayo Arts Award yeah, for outstanding online media. Never look down upon these awards. These are our own. And uh, when you go outside Zimbabwe and um, they ask you about your CV and you mention these awards, you're somebody big just by these awards. I know we've got a lot of people who say, ah, I'm waiting for a Grammy. A Grammy? Those <laughs> Grammys were made by Americans for Americans, not for you. And when they mention other African countries or other Asian countries, it's just tokenism. The last time they gave uh, Jamaican awards, Zoti Gorelipi, they told them, you are not going to pass through the red carpet. You have to go through the kitchen. That's why Shabarinks refused to go. Oh. Because it's just tokenism. They don't love you. They have nothing to do with you. It's just tokenism. Because Americans, they live in a bubble. They told you, I mean, they tell you, this one is the best guitarist in the world. If you have a head of my guitarist in Zimbabwe, can I have a in <laughs> But you say, this one is the best guitarist. They tell you, Angelina Jolie is the most beautiful woman in the world. Have you ever seen the ladies from Hawaii? No. They haven't. They haven't. <laughs> so, they live in a bubble. They think their country is the world. Uh-huh. So let's value our own awards. I know we make mistakes here and there, but which awards ceremony do you know is not more controversies? None. Haven't you seen Kanye West at Butira Taylor Swift Award <laughs> Yes. That's USA. So even ours can title my mistakes, Monum, blow arts merit awards, get my mistakes. Just correct them, guys. We were map award you, Mampa say, Nama get my mistakes, tell them, guys, Kunama say. Then we correct each other and we move forward. Let's yes. not look down upon our own And grow hours. the creative sector. Yeah, yes. We grow as we criticize each other productively. Mm-hmm. One, there's constructive criticism, criticism. there's destructive criticism. <laughs> In page, I allow constructive criticism. Once that destructive criticism, I block you. I'm a happy blog, I block people. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, guys, let's treasure this. Whoever came up with these awards, I salute you. Whoever came up with this idea, 
He's a genius. Let's support these people. Thank you. Shout out to Royal BAA. Yes. So, Daran, I want you to go with the message. Can I make you my messenger? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, trade fair is coming in Bulawayo. So, can you tell Yombinga guys mm. that side in Harare? Can you tell all my face, all Amatita, won't say Harare? Trade fair is coming. Tell them to cool down when they're coming to Bulawayo. Just relax. So, why do you talk about cooling down? What do they do? Or what did they do they come last time? Here, when they come here, we become single. You become? We become single guys. <laughs> oh, you mean they take all the women? I oh, mean, they're beautiful. I mean, one of the ringi, I'm venge, venge. Just you ever just take the message there. The details I might be giving you ideas of. of, oh, of oh, so then, I'm not supposed to say the details. Yes, I just tell them to just take them. the message that side. Because if I get into, if I delve into de if, into details, you might do the exact thing that I'm trying to avoid. Well, the reason why I'm asking is, I was but I was. Um, a student at the College of Music in 2001 and 2002, we did a tour of Mashingo. And as soon as we arrived, Tantaka Mira is guys, as men. From Harare. Yeah, and the guys came and said, guys, don't take our women. <laughs> Never take our women. <laughs> so, <laughs> so is it the same thing? Are they taking the women? Yeah, um, they come here. Vano with the ladies, Nema SUVs, Avo, Nema Chichi, and right now they've been given cars. It's going to be triple West. That day again, this again, this is not Mike, but Duzi. Because I didn't want to be misquoted. Because do you know a laugh can be misquoted? <laughs> <laughs> They'll be asking you that's how you could want to say. Hey, one man. So that's why I removed the microphone now. Yes, yes. Clive, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for so much, Sibo. I celebrate you. Thank you, Sibo. Adam from Film for Show.